Alef, bet, bet, gimel, dalet, hey, bof, sein, chet, tet, yud, kof, kof, lamed, men, un, samech, ein, pey, fit, sadi, kuf, reish, shun, sin, tof, now I think I've said enough. Welcome to another lesson in our series from the Aleph Bet for anyone of any age who wishes to learn to read and understand Hebrew, especially Hebrew that's part of the Jewish experience here in America. I'm Mark Golub, and again, it's a pleasure for me to be with you. So where are we now? If you've been with us, you know we've learned three Hebrew letters from the 22-letter Hebrew alphabet. We've learned the shin, which makes the sh sound of the English letters sh. And we have a little animation to help you remember the sound the shin makes. It's a ship, like the Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria that Columbus used. It's a ship, turning into the Hebrew letter shin. Very well done, Alan. We've also learned the letter tough, which makes the t sound in Hebrew. And the sound of the tough is easy to remember by noticing that the tough is the only Hebrew letter with a big toe. And here's another animation. The tough is the only letter with a big toe. T, T, tough. A Hebrew letter that makes the T sound. And the shin and the tough are the last two letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And we've also learned the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the letter bet, which makes the B sound in Hebrew, B. And we also pointed out that the bet is a line that comes up from a bed, as you see in the animation, and has a ball inside it, all ways to reinforce the idea that the bet makes a B sound. And again, the animation reminds you that the bet begins with a bed and that inside it there is a ball. And we also learned that the dot inside the bet is actually called a dagesh and that almost any letter in the Hebrew alphabet can have a dagesh inside it and the dagesh does not change the sound of a letter. In all but three letters, a dagesh does not change the sound of that letter. So for example, a shin can have a dagesh in it and it still makes a sh sound. The tough can have a dagesh in it and in Sephardic Hebrew, which is the Hebrew dialect spoken in Israel and which we're learning here on from the Aleph Bet, the tough still makes a T sound with or without a dagesh. Most Hebrew letters do not change sound with or without the dagesh. Three letters do change sound depending on whether they have a dagesh in them or not. And one of them is the letter bet. And in a later lesson, we'll learn that a bet without a dagesh is pronounced like the English letter V rather than B. But for now, we're only studying the bet with a dagesh and the bet with a dagesh always makes the B sound B. So the three letters we've learned so far are the shin, the tough, and the bet. We've also learned that in Hebrew, all Hebrew letters are consonants, while vowels are dots and dashes. And the first vowels we've learned are the patach, which makes the sound of ah, as in the word father, and the kamats, which also makes the sound ah, as in father. And Hebrew is a very easy language to read and pronounce because unlike English, every Hebrew syllable has one vowel, always one vowel, and never more than one vowel. So that if you count the number of vowels in a word 
by counting the dots and dashes in a Hebrew word, you immediately know how many syllables are in that word. There's always a one-to-one -one correlation between the number of vowels in a Hebrew word and the number of syllables in a Hebrew word. And a Hebrew syllable is made up of a letter plus a vowel. So, for example, if you see a shin with a patach under it, reading down, the syllable is sha. Sha. The shin makes the sh sound, and we simply add the ah sound of the patach to create the entire syllable sha. So how would you pronounce this syllable? If you said ta, you are correct. The tuff has a kamatz under it, so that reading down, the syllable is read ta. Okay, how about this two-syllable nonsense word? How would you pronounce it? If you said baba, you would be absolutely correct. The word has two vowels and therefore two syllables. And reading down and then right to left, which is the way Hebrew is read, the first syllable is the bet with a patach, ba. And the second syllable is the bet with a kamatz, also ba. And in Hebrew, words tend to be accented on the last syllable, so this nonsense word would be pronounced baba. And this is the basis of reading Hebrew. Letter plus vowel. That's the basic building block of Hebrew words. Letter plus vowel. And then I told you the secret to being able to read and pronounce any Hebrew word is the Shiva. And the Shiva is never counted as a vowel. Never, ever. And every Hebrew letter must have either a vowel or a shva. Let me say that again. Every Hebrew letter must have either a vowel or a shva. Must have one, can never have both, either a vowel or a shva. But the shva is never counted as a vowel, whether the shva is silent or pronounced. The shva is never counted as a vowel. I cannot repeat that enough. And understanding how a shva works is the secret to being able to read and pronounce any Hebrew word you see. And we began by learning the silent shva. Any Hebrew letter with a silent shva under it ends a Hebrew syllable. And the silent shva is very easy to understand with a simple example. Here we have the nonsense word Bata. Bata. Both the bet and the tough each have a vowel, which means that each letter begins its own syllable. Two vowels, two syllables. Bata. Bata. But what about this word? This word now only has one vowel, the patach under the bet. So it's a one-syllable word. The tough does not have a vowel under it. It has a silent schwa under it. And the schwa is never counted as a vowel. And because the schwa under the tough is silent, the tough is added to the bet and patach in front of it to create one entire syllable. It's as if a silent schwa extends the syllable by one more letter. And the silent shva ends or closes the Hebrew syllable. So this syllable is actually read bat. Bat. And actually bat is a real Hebrew word. It means daughter. Bat is the Hebrew word for daughter which many of you know from the term bat mitzvah. And finally, we also learned your first real Hebrew word. Shabbat. 
Shabbat. Shabbat has two Hebrew vowels, so it has two Hebrew syllables. The first syllable is Sha, and the second syllable is Bat. And remember, every Hebrew letter must have either a vowel or a shva. So what does the tuf have in the word Shabbat? And the answer is the tuf has a silent shva under it. But because the tuf is the last letter of the word, the shva is simply understood and does not have to be actually written. In almost all cases, if the last letter of a Hebrew word has a silent shva, the shva is understood and is not written. So the word is written without the silent shva at the end of the word under the tuf, and the word is pronounced Shabbat. And my friends, if you can read the word Shabbat, you are well on your way to being able to read any Hebrew word. And you're also ready for your next Hebrew letter. It's the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the letter Aleph. It is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And the Aleph is one of two Hebrew letters that makes no sound at all. It's a silent letter. Notice, by the way, that the name of the letter Aleph does not begin with a consonant sound the way Bet does or Tuf does or Shin does. Again, the Aleph is a silent letter which makes no sound consonant sound. And we have something similar to this in English. In English there are letters which sometimes are silent. For example, in the word lamb, the B is silent. In the word psychology, the P is silent. But in Hebrew, the letter Aleph is always silent. By the way, in ancient Hebrew, the Aleph was pronounced as a hard, guttural, glottal sound, like argh. And as Hebrew developed, that sound was dropped, though the guttural sounds are still pronounced by Arabs. And sometimes, young people ask me, if the Aleph is silent, why is it in the word? Why don't we just drop the letter? And the answer is, because that's how the word is spelled. The word is spelled with an Aleph. It's a real letter. And even though we don't pronounce the letter B in the word lamb, we can't drop the B. It's how the word lamb is spelled. So even if an aleph is not pronounced in a word, even if it's silent, it's still how the word is spelled. So let's look at a real Hebrew word with the letter aleph. Actually, there are two alephs in this word. How many vowels are in this word? Two is correct. How many syllables are in the word? Obviously, two is correct again. There's always a one-to-one -one relationship between vowels and syllables in Hebrew. So how would you read the first syllable of this word? Remember, the aleph is silent, so you'd simply pronounce the vowel under the aleph to pronounce the first syllable. If you said ah, you are correct. The first syllable of this word is simply ah, since the aleph is silent and there's a patach under it. Simply pronounce the vowel under any aleph you see. And you've pronounced that entire syllable. In this case, it is ah. The first syllable of this word is ah. And the second syllable, if you said ba, you are correct again, mitsuyan. The bet has a kamatz under it and is pronounced ba. And the last letter of the word, which has an understood silent shva under it, is the silent aleph, and therefore it makes no sound. So the entire second syllable of this word is ba. So how would you pronounce this entire Hebrew word? Abba is correct. Mitsuyan, Mitsuyan. By the way, the accent in this word is placed on the first syllable, Abba. And what does the word Abba mean? Father or daddy. Abba means father or daddy. A child in Israel calls his father Abba. My children call me Abba. 
You may also recall that one of Israel's greatest spokespersons was the wonderful Abba Iban, who took the name Abba as his Hebrew name. His actual first name was Aubrey, but later in life he changed his name from Aubrey Iban to Abba Iban, Abba meaning father. So now you know the first two letters of the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph and Bet, and you know the last two letters of the Hebrew alphabet, Shin and Taf. So let's learn another vowel. It's very easy. It's the Hebrew equivalent of the English vowel O. And when I teach young people, I say to them, if something hits you on top of the head, you say O. Oh. So this vowel is similar to the long O in English, as in the word Coke. And this vowel is called a cholom. Actually, Israelis pronounce the cholom O rather in a shorter way, almost like O, oh, O. Oh. So you can try that pronunciation as well. But to make things simpler for us, we're going to write the cholom as the long English vowel O, as in the word Coke or Coca-Cola. And just as there are two ways to write the vowel ah in Hebrew, there are two ways to write the O in Hebrew, either with the vertical line, which is called male or filled, and you can also write the cholom without the vertical line, chaser, which means lacking. But the important thing to remember is this, when you see a circle over a letter, written either with a line or without a vertical line, it's the Hebrew vowel O, as in the word Coke. And again, sometimes I simply write the English O and fill the O in, and that becomes the O for young people. It's the vowel as close as we get to the vowel O in English. So how will you pronounce this syllable? Toe is correct. The tough with the vowel O. How would you pronounce this one syllable word? Bow is correct. The bet makes a B sound, the chola makes an O sound, and the aleph is silent. Bow. And this real Hebrew word in English means come. Bow. Come. And the word would be pronounced the same way if the vertical line was not under the dot. This is also pronounced bow. So let's learn two more Hebrew letters. This is the Hebrew letter Lamed, and it's the Hebrew L. So how would you pronounce this syllable? Very good. La is correct. How about this syllable? La is correct again. Now how about this syllable with our new vowel? Lo is correct, mitsuyan. Again, some Israelis would say lo. But either lo or lo is correct. By the way, lo is a real Hebrew word, and it means to him. If you gave a book to him, you'd use the word lo. How about another real Hebrew word with our new vowel? If you said lo again, mitsuyan, mitsuyan, the lamed has the cholom chaser. There's no vertical line. It's the o that simply sits near the top of the lamed. And the word ends with a silent aleph. So the word is pronounced lo or lo. And this is the Hebrew word for no. To say no in Hebrew, you simply say lo. So that's the lamed. And one more letter for this lesson. I'm going to show you what's called in Hebrew the final mem, or in Hebrew the mem sofit, a final mem. And by now you know that the name of the letter indicates its sound, so the mem makes the English M sound. But what does it mean that it's a final mem? It means that this mem will only appear 
at the end of a word, as the last letter of a word. This mem will never appear at the beginning of a word or inside a word. The final mem, or the mem sofit, as it's called in Hebrew, sofit meaning end or suffix, the final mem will only appear at the end of a word. And we have some of the same idea in English. When I was in grammar school learning to write cursive or script, I was taught to write the lowercase t one way if it came at the beginning or in the middle of a word, but I was taught a slightly different way to write a t at the end of the word. I don't know if young people are still taught this way, but when I was in second grade, this is what I was taught. One way to write a T at the beginning or inside a word, and a different way to write the T at the end of a word. It was the final T. And the same thing for the letter R. We were taught to write the R one way at the beginning or inside a word, and then we were taught to write the R differently at the end of a word. And this is the same thing that's true in Hebrew. There are five Hebrew letters which are written differently at the end of a word. And one of these five letters is the letter Mem. In fact, Alex, let's show what the Mem looks like when it comes at the beginning or inside a Hebrew word. This is the normal Mem, which we're not learning this lesson. And here's the way a Mem appears when it comes at the end of a word. And since the final mem is always the last letter of a word, there's always an understood silent shva under it, which obviously does not need to be written. So now, how would you pronounce this syllable? Lam is correct. Very good. How about this syllable? Tom is correct. Tom. Mitsuyan. Okay, how about this syllable, which actually is a real Hebrew word. Take your time and see if you can read this real Hebrew word. One syllable. If you said sham, you're absolutely correct. Mitsuyan. And the word sham means there, as in over there. The song by uh, George M. Cohan, over there. And sham is also one of the words on the dreidel, the little top that's spun on Hanukkah. And you remember that uh, the dreidel has four letters. Can you come in on this, Vitali? We'll see the letters beginning here. There's a nun, a gimel, a hey, and a shin. And this is the letter we've learned so far. And each one of these letters stands for another Hebrew word. The nun stands for the word nes, as in the word miracle. The gimel stands for gadol, or great, or large. So nes gadol is a great miracle. And the he stands for the word haya, which means was, although we normally translate it as happened. And finally, the last word on the dreidel comes with the letter shin, which you know, and it stands for the word sham, which means there. So, a great miracle, nes gadol, haya, happened or was, sham, there. And the word there refers to Judea, where the miracle of Hanukkah took place. Nes gadol, haya, sham, a great miracle happened there. So here's one more word. It's the last word of this lesson. It's a word I hope you'll really learn. Take a look at this word, one of the most important words in the Hebrew language. How many vowels does this word have? Two is the correct answer. The kamatz under the shin and the cholom after the lamed. So two vowels two syllables. What's the first syllable? Take your time. The first syllable is simply the shin with the kamats under it, so it's pronounced sha. By the way, is the lamed, which is the second letter of this word, part of the first syllable? 
And you should know the answer is no, lo, because it does not have a silent shva under it, which means the lamad begins its own new syllable. So the first syllable of this word is simply sha. Now how about the second syllable? How is it pronounced? There's a lamid by the vowel O, the cholam, followed by a final mem, and the syllable is pronounced loam. Loam. So now put this word together and you get shalom, the Hebrew word for peace. And you know, some people think the word shalom means hello and goodbye. Actually, the word shalom only means peace. But when a Jew meets another person, the greeting is peace, shalom, which is like hello. And when a Jew leaves another person, the wish again is for peace, shalom, which is like saying goodbye. So the word shalom is used for hello and goodbye, but the word shalom means peace. And once again, language begins to tell you how a people thinks. The idea of peace is a constant Jewish theme. We want peace for ourselves and for all humanity. And I taught you earlier that Hebrew words are comprised of three root letters, that virtually all Hebrew words have three root letters, and those letters really give you a sense of what the Hebrew word is trying to convey. And the three-letter root of the word shalom is shin, lamed, mem. And the meaning of this root, shin, lamed, mem, is to be whole or complete. And that's the essence of the word shalom in Hebrew. When we wish someone peace, we wish that they find wholeness and completeness and harmony in their life. And the opposite of shalom is to be broken up, fractionalized, incomplete, a lack of harmony. And one hopes for shalom between nations, a sense of harmony and completeness. And when the Jewish tradition speaks about peace in the home, a very important Jewish value, shalom bayit, bayit meaning home, shalom bayit. The Jewish tradition is hoping for a sense of harmony and completeness between husband and wife and among all family members. And when the Jewish tradition hopes that an individual finds peace, the tradition is hoping that a human being finds personal completeness and wholeness within oneself. It's a wonderful, wonderful word, shalom. And its centrality in Jewish thinking tells a great deal about the Jewish mind and heart. The Jew is always yearning for shalom, peace. It will mark ultimate human fulfillment. When the world knows shalom, when the world is in complete and total harmony, it will be a world of messianic proportion. And so here's your first phrase in Hebrew. The phrase used as a special greeting on the most special day of the week. Can you read this Hebrew greeting? And you know, it's made up of two words you know. And the words are Shabbat and Shalom. And the phrase means, when you put it together, Sabbath peace, Shabbat Shalom. In Hebrew, it's what people say to each other as a Sabbath greeting. In English, you'll often hear people also say Good Shabbos, which uses the Ashkenazic pronunciation of Shabbat, but you'll also hear Shabbat Shalom, which means Sabbath peace. 
and it's one of the most wonderful expressions in the Hebrew language. Shabbat Shalom. And then if you add this word, Abba, Father, you have an even longer Hebrew phrase that you understand. Shabbat Shalom, Abba. Sabbath peace, Father. Shabbat Shalom, Abba. Take a look one more time at these three Hebrew words that you now know. Shabbat Shalom, Abba. If you're comfortable reading these three Hebrew words, Shabbat Shalom, Abba, then congratulations, Mazel Tov, Mitsuyan, Mitsuyan, Mitsuyan. You should be so proud of yourself. You are truly reading and understanding Hebrew. I hope you enjoyed that lesson of From the Aleph Bet. And remember, you can download lesson sheets and worksheets for every lesson of the series free of charge. Just visit the JBS website homepage at jbstv.org and click on the program icon for From the Aleph Bet. And then click on the very first option, From the Aleph Bet Hebrew Study Sheets. And for anyone who can send JBS a tax-deductible donation of $180 or more, we'll be pleased to send you the entire 20 program series one of From the Aleph Bet on DVD, complete with a CD of lesson sheets and worksheets. JBS, expanding Jewish understanding, celebrating all things Jewish. Be well, my friends. Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Bob, Sein, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kof, Chof, Lamed, Mem.